want to increase your ability in both management and leadership so that it impacts your results at the highest possible level, then you're in the right place. Because today you're going to be learning from someone who's been there, who's done it, who's doing it right now. He's managed people through challenges. He's actually going through some serious challenges of his own right now as well. He's led teams to great things, achievement, teamwork, mentality. He's got the experience. What's more, everything that he does comes from a place of love, compassion. He's got a massive heart. He believes in people. His middle name is Integrity, in my opinion. So let's welcome to your screen the England Rugby League manager, Sean Wayne. Hi, everyone. Hey, James. Hey, hey, I tell you what, as soon as I meet you and, and get in the same room with you, I mean, this is our third or fourth time of hooking up like this. I just feel really good every time, Sean. Good. I'm glad I have that effect. That is the plan. There you go, Phil. Phil was waiting and he was just getting a cup of tea. So thank you, Phil. We've got a couple of other people here as well. Abby, she's she's here watching. Um, yeah, look, let's have a good session. What we what we've done with this um, uh, for everybody watching right now, we've got this up in four areas. Give us your questions. Give us your comments. This is your chance to ask Sean direct questions yourself as well. We're going over management. We're going over leadership. We're going over achieve, achievement and mindset. So let's get the first topic. The first topic is management. And the first question for you is what are your top three lessons in management of people? Um, as, as the head coach of Wigan, James, one of the, the, the big things in management was managing up, uh, managing down. Right. Well, the, the, the big pressure for me was managing up. I had owners, I had directors, and... Um, the majority of sporting organisations, the owners don't know much about the sport. And and that, that was a real challenge. Um, but I had a light bulb moment um, during my coaching career. And, uh, and I, I told myself, you know, this guy who owns our club is pumping millions and millions of pounds into our club. And he, he deserves to know more. He deserves to ask questions. He... He, he, he deserves, he has earned the right to um, quiz me in a decent way about how the team's going to go and what we're going to do. And at one time, I was very, quite defensive. Well, uh, I like that, Sean. Uh, you know, the fact that, that you're actually using that language, he deserves this. I mean, that's like what I was saying about your integrity and your compassion for the people. Yeah. It's, just, yeah. it's just rife in everything that you do. I mean, it's important in anything to look at it in, in 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 their shoes the way they are and and this guy would own our club he spent millions of pounds um doing what he does with our club and and making it work so he he, he does deserve the right to to ask me about what's happening and and then that changed my attitude that made our meetings more enjoyable once you get your head around that they're not out to get you they're out to they just want to know what's going on with uh, the money what spend it, I suppose. And uh, then after that, we had a, a really, really good relationship. You know, um, towards the end of my career, I don't know if you remember, in 2018, I, I resigned from the job. Um, one thing about me, James, I, I know you know, I, I have principles. I'm a very principled yeah. person and, um, and I'll work with people, but I, there's certain things which... I will not bend on with anybody. And I'm an alternate winner. I need to win. And nothing will come in between me and winning. And uh, when I had a few chats with the owner, um, he, he was about profit and uh, not losing money. And I was about winning as much as possible. So our, my attitude, our principles didn't align. And, um, and I resigned, you know, out, out of pure principle. Uh, from a dream job, the best job I could ever wish for. Um, so whilst uh, I love the job and I want to stay doing it, I had to leave it because of we just thought in a different way. Uh, and after doing that, I left. I went to Scotland. I went, you know, I went doing different jobs. Um, and then I've got asked to go back in a lot, a lot more senior role now as a director of. Um, I, I performance and improve just improve improve everybody within yeah. the business and i love it so uh, i i don't think 
if I'd have stuck to my principles the way I did, I would be back, back there now um, in a better role. So that was a good lesson for me. I'm near, I'm 58, right. uh, 57, I don't know all them. I've been concussed a few times. Um, but I'm still learning at my age, you know, I'm still, you know, my eyes are open, my ears are open, I want to learn every day, and that was a good lesson for me. All right, so look, we've got managing up, we've got managing down. Is there Are there any other top lessons in, in people management here? Yeah, this was a big one for me because with coaching rugby league players, um, there's a lot of flawed individuals because rugby league is that. Uh, it, the sport is that tough and brutal. I've had 30 operations. I've got, yeah. I've got jaw operations and cheap bones and eye sockets and shoulders and knees. And and um, the individuals that play league uh, are very flawed individuals. And what, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, it's not normal for a man to, to every day to run into another man and smash and wrestle. It's... Yeah. It's a brutal, brutal sport. You play injured and, you know, it's it's not normal human beings can't do what rugby league players do. Uh, so that's what sort of person you're dealing with. And some of them are not educated to an high standard. So they've all got different learning styles. So remembering your message throughout my coaching career of some people learn by watching videos, some people that like learn by practice on a field, some people learn by having a, a booklet like an iPad to read. Um, so understanding that whatever the learn the, the learning style is, it is covered. Um, and that that was a that was a real big one for me to you know to to grip as a as an end coach. What about what about this question then? This is quite an interesting one. And what have been your most expensive mistakes that you've made managing people? I've made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes, and I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot more about myself by making mistakes than right. through my successes. Uh, but one mistake I made was um, when I was a uh, when I was head coach. Uh, our juniors, our under seventeens, were training at six in the morning. Right. Uh, they do two hours and then they go and work. We put them with a sponsor. They work all day. They work hard, and then they come back and do a two hour training session at night every day for seven days, and they do that for a few weeks. So it's a message for most of them that life's not easy. It's it's tough. Yeah. This is what life is about. And I went down at half five and a, a young player turned up at 20 past six. It was Liam Marshall. And he, 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 he'd done a few things which I didn't like. He couldn't be on time. So I said to Matty, the coach, Matty Pete, who's now the head coach, I said to Matty, I want you to cut him. I want you to get rid. Uh, I don't like his attitude. And, uh, and I went back to my... Uh, coaching the, the first team and I left Matty alone and Matty went against my wishes he cared about Liam and he saw something in him which I couldn't see and um, and he kept him with him he kept him with him in, in, with the juniors he didn't sack him and uh, and he just all of a sudden just changed his life around Liam and ended up playing first team ended up a great player and ended up being an England player who I picked a few weeks ago before the World Cup and it was just a lesson to me that I don't know it all. I'm always learning. I get things wrong. Just don't be so arrogant to think you know everything. And uh, and that was a not expensive, but it was a I made a mistake. Yeah, I mean Jack Well, she says give everybody two chances. You know that because you hear you hear that everybody gets a second chance type thing. But, but Jack Well, she's employed more people than anyone in any other business ever. He says everybody gets two chances. Yeah, uh, quite interesting that. Um, yeah. So, was that when you were early on in your coaching career? Yeah, it was. It, it would have been. I mean, I've, I've coached on 58, 57. I've coached since I was 23. So, I've right. coached for a long, long time. But it was round about 2013. I started coaching full time with Wigan as head coach in 2011 assistant in 2010 so it was quite early on james definitely Go, going really hard and making sort of that early judgment call i mean that's what you're saying the lesson is there because the, you know this situation he, he turned that lead to out to flourish yeah so um this is quite common that as well in business as well you yeah. know going overly hard too soon in the wrong way i mean it's a big lesson i'm guessing it's for people that are here on the call as well 
Um, what are your best decisions then? What are your best decisions or actions that you've made in, in management of people? I think being, I made a decision early on, and this wasn't like an organized, a planned, I'm going, to, I'm going to be this way. But I am very, very honest. And some people don't handle my honesty um, very well. I, I have a flaw in my character that I'm very, very abrupt. Um, so all, over, the, over the years, um, if I, if I send you a message, James, I'm not one for pleasantries. Hey, James, are you doing your very good weekend? I'm not. I just want to ask you the question I want. And, um, so that's something I've tried to get better at. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, it, people don't like that. You know, I said, I have a CEO at the RFL, Ralph Rimmer, and I'll, I'll ask him a question and he'll come back to me and say, good morning, Sean. How are you? Have you had a good weekend? And I realise what I've done. Hmm. So it's something which people don't like, you know, but to me, uh, it's quite easy. So I think my best decisions is I'm very, very humble. I, 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 everything starts with me. Um, I look at myself first. So I, I know I know today I will get a, a question about um, a recent World Cup game. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. I way think I've got one coming, for, I've got one coming up for you. Yeah. Yeah. So the way I, I always look at myself, James, is uh, if anything goes wrong in my life, if anything goes right in my life, it's about uh, looking at what what have I done? What have I done? Have I done the best thing? Uh, have I made the right choice? Um, have I given them the right information? You know, everything's about me. And then once I've got that right in my head, um, then I look outside slightly. Um, so I, I'm a big believer about be out on yourself and be easy on others. Uh, I do I do believe that, and that's one of the best decisions I made. I've, you know, mentally told myself yeah. years ago that I'm I'm I'm, I'm I, I go I, I do hundreds and hundreds of these talks to organisations. I've seen senior people, and too many people. Something goes wrong, and the first thing they do is look round to who they can blame. And to me. And this is only my opinion that is totally the wrong thing to do. The first thing you should do is what influence have you had on, on what's happened? It's a good it question, that, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's a good question to ask in your own sort of emotional intelligence, your self awareness. You know, what in, what influence have I had on what's happened here? Let's yeah. Get a, let, let's get an appreciation of that before anything else happens. You know, I know, I know Jen, before you carry on, I know lots of people on this call. And, and I don't want the answers now, but it's a good exercise to do. If you think back in the last 12 months, um, we're starting a new year, and have a think back of the things in your life, in your family, in personal life, in your business life, in your, what's gone wrong, and how you handled it, and what you thought about it. And if, if people and the nerd tell the truth, um, there'll be a few people who, who can get better at that, who look to blame. Do you know what? Let's, let's see if anyone's bold enough to put any comments in. You know, I mean, that's it's a challenging question. That feel yeah. free to get it in the get get any comments into the question box at any point. What about you, James? Can you think of anything from the last year? Yeah, what biggest you... biggest lessons and biggest things that I'd like to repair. Probably, probably that in communication. You know, probably if uh, I think I I always think integrity is two parts to integrity. One is is pure love for other people and doing the right thing for other people. I think that's one part of integrity. And the other one is doing what you say you're going to do, which is obviously the the uh, a definition that comes up regularly. And it's that one. It's that one that, you know, I aim to be much more like you. Yeah. Follow through on what I'm saying I'm going to do. Say I'm no to more things. It. Do the most important things. It's so simple that do what you say you're going to do, but people find it so hard. Be, do you know why? Because they're saying yes to too many other things. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, th that's the thing. I see it. I do it. I'm a coach here. I've, you know, the, for, put, put some comments in the chat box, by the way, folks, if, they, if this is anything for you. Um, so uh, they, there you go. Let's see if we've got anyone uh, willing to do this. Oh, Mike Greenwood. 
Uh, lots happened that he's learned from. Let's see where he's got. Mike's in your neck of the woods, by the way. He's over. He's over your side. In my relationship, that has been repaired due to communication. You see, that communication is such an important thing, isn't it? Mainly listening, but telling people how you feel. I love the share that he's done there, Sean. I love what for it. I love what how Mike has shared that. Yeah, Mainly yeah, fantastic. And also telling other people how how he feels. Yeah. And, and 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 this is something which is um probably my most common saying about tell everybody everything all the time uh and when i'm talking and i end up saying their words so many times because it's in my life so much and and what mike's saying there is is absolutely so important if you in your organization if you can have that where people no, I'm talking about cleaners and no matter what role you you what role you have in the business, if you can tell everybody everything all the time, how you feel, am I happy, am I sad, I don't like what you've just done, please don't do that again, do that again, you've helped me out. If you can have that mentality in any organisation, you're a strong organisation, you go in places, you're doing good things. Um, but people foolishly think it's um, confrontational and it's not it, it, it's not confrontational because if I work for you James the one thing I don't want you to do to me is sack me I want to know if I'm not doing the job that you want me to do I want you to tell me and we'll work together I want you to coach me and tell me what I'm doing wrong and help me do it right and I want to stay in the job that to me is current so when, when that's one thing which I've done throughout my life is tell everybody everything all the time. Look, People that, know what it's done. It might get embarrassing, but so well communicate. Let's just stay on this point for a second because this is yeah, that was so powerful what you said. When you communicate like that and you tell people how you feel and you tell people what's expected of them and tell everyone where they are, your words to quote you what you just said, you were like, you're a strong organization. You're going places. That's how you said it. And I, it kind of hit me straight away. I was like, oh, I believe what you say there. You know, let's let's take it on. Let's acknowledge it. Like, comment on that, folks, if you want. Um, because there was something else. And I, I went through, in preparation for this, I went through and listened to a number of other things that you've done. Um, like, where is it? Oh, this is what you said. Organizations that do the basics well are organizations that are set up to achieve now that's a bit of a variant of what you've just said as well talk about the basics what is doing the basics well in business or in any organization in in, in a business organization in a sports organization it's doing the simple things it's 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 individuals employees sports people doing things in the dark when they're not going to get praised for it um it's turning up on time it's answering the phone correctly it's having respect to people you deal with on a daily basis um doing that every single day is, is so important I, I did a talk recently for a, a large bank in london and i went in and uh, the security guy was quite rude to me and uh, i had to bite my lip quite a bit and I looked behind the reception and there were lots and lots of boxes piled up with it behind reception and it looked, it didn't look on it, it didn't look tidy. Yeah. And they took me upstairs and I'm speaking in this big auditorium, which was a multi-million pound auditorium with fantastic speakers and fantastic sound, which was brilliant. But if I if I had gone into that bank as a millionaire like you, James, uh to invest money uh i would have been offended by the security man and i would have looked behind the counter and seen that look as though it looked a bit scruffy so it's all right having all the flashy auditorium but do the basics make sure that the security man and the receptionist have good manners and they respect people and make sure things are tidy uh simple thing what you're in control of don't look at all the flashy things in the auditorium because the damage has been done and, and I've always thought that, you know, I want, when we played at Wigan, we coached at Wigan, uh, in, in our day-to-day -day world we trained, 
if you'd have walked in there, Jen, everybody in that organisation would have shoot the round, you round, and would have introduced himself and made you feel welcome, made you drink your tea, and, you know, and that's the way everybody is, and everything was neat and tidy, and no matter what time of the day you come, we look like we was organised, and um, so it's very, very easy to do, but people don't do it. So doing the simple things really well, really well creates greatness, creates success, I believe. Yeah, like I was, I thought you were going to say stuff like communicating and being on time for meetings, but you, you're going even simpler for basics. It's like, you know, having a tidy front desk. Like when you said that there, if you come, if you came into my business, everyone would shake your hand. That everyone would take you and go make you a cup of tea. It's like you are the ultimate in warmth, aren't you? It's like yeah. so. It's you, you, you like putting love around people straight away. Love it. There's a couple of comments that are coming in. Let's get these out. Uh, Mike Green once again. Typical British way of men to bowl things up and keep it to themselves. Yeah, blame it. Blame the British. Hey, right. Um, we've got another comment here. Richard Pattinson. Richard. CFRs, all right, this comes from John Doerr. He wrote a book called Measure What Matters. He talks about OKRs, objectives and key results, and CFRs, communication, feedback, and recognition. That is a really good point, Richard. Uh, I mean, you know, who are you going to communicate with? Who's getting feedback? Who are you going to recognize? What do you think about that? Rec How important is recognition in management then, Sean? I think it, it is so important. When you think about that saying, tell everybody everything all the time, um, if you work for me, James, or you, Richard, um, I would tell you every day, I'm happy with what you're doing. I'm not happy with what you're doing. You need to change because everybody in our organisation, we're a salary cap sport. Everybody has to overperform. So I had to get the best. I had to get the best out of everybody, every physio, yeah. every rugby player, every every. Uh, strength and conditioning coach so you do that by a lot of touches a lot of communication a lot of i like what you're doing i don't like what you're doing but always with the negative when you don't like what somebody's doing give them a way out you know work with them to make sure they can fix what they, what you're what you're not happy with and um and once once you have employees like that you know that you're on their side and you, you you're working with them then you've got employees for life. You've got employees who will stay with you forever and they, they put the business first. And, and it, it's just that, again, it's a, it's a type of cur, you know what I mean? So, look, look, that's the big message that we're getting right now. It's this compassion, care, standards, basics. Love what we said. I just want to acknowledge a couple of other things before we uh, move it on to the next topic. Uh, what's Mike putting here? Mike's all over these comments. And I've also started to use Trust and Inspire. That's a, a book by Stephen Covey. Uh, being open with staff so they know how the business is performing, how they are performing, and asking for feedback on my own performance. Nice. Mike Moss has put, oh, to quote you, it might get embarrassing, but. So, like, that's a bit like swallowing your pride, really, isn't it? It's just, yeah. it might get embarrassing. Just love that. Nice. Yeah, one. absolutely right. Uh, uh, he had to bite his lip. Um, uh, look at this. Security guy must have been brave or stupid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, James Burke, a friend of mine, spoke for you. Uh, Tom Blackledge. He did. And he said that the number one thing that, uh, that stood out was everybody was down to earth and polite. So there you go. There's some feedback straight from James Burke. He's the man in Manchester. Yeah. Tom uh, Blackledge. Um yeah. He's a big, big, tough guy. He comes sport for me in the England camp. He's a Wigan lad and he sport really, really well. Uh, I was really impressed. I'm, I'm really happy he thinks that about us. JW, the big JW. So treat people well, even the little people. You never know when they are in a position to do you a good turn in return. What do you say to that one then? Yeah, I, I mean, it's not only doing it... Um, so they can do, do a good turn. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing. It's the right way to treat people, have respect for people. Um, but respect is shining. Like in this first 20, 20 odd minutes, I mean, this is a lot of respect is coming out of all the messages that you send in here. So let's move it on, actually. Let's click into the next topic, Wolster. Just click us away. So we, well, I want to go over leadership now. So we're going on, moving on from my, uh, management. Let's go over into leaderships. 
Um, what are the top three lessons that you've got for us in leadership? Well, I, I've always had a, a thing, James, about start with the end. So I went to Seattle a few weeks, months ago, a few weeks ago, speaking, and um, every every business needs to know why they exist, why they do what they do, what what their end is, and and I talk about my pyramid, you know. And at the bottom of my pyramid is all the basics, the standards and turn up on time, respect people. But at the top, everybody in our organization would know that we were about winning grand finals. You walked into our building and asked the cleaner, why do you do what you do? She would say, we, we want to win grand finals. Amazing. And that's the cleaner who's mopping up. She knew. So everybody needs to know now whether it's profit, whether it's share price, whether it's safety, whatever the reason is why you exist, you need to know. Do you think that's the leader's job then? Is it the leader's job to make sure that literally everybody is communicating with, right from the people that are cleaning the kitchens and emptying the bins, right through to the, the senior management team or the leadership team or the board of directors? Do you think it's the leader's job to make sure every single person knows why we exist, knows what we're doing, knows what our objectives are. Yeah, and they play the part. No, no, whether you're the cleaner, the chef, the, the, no matter what you do, the odd job man, whether you're a player, a, a physio, everybody has a role to play and everybody's important. So when you do have success, we would have a, a function at night and everybody invited to it. Every, everybody, everybody got on the picture at the end of the, of the, the month when we grand final, so everybody got recognised. Well, the point I want to make here, James, is when you have a start with the end, when you know where you, why you exist and what your goal is, why your business does what it does, then when you work back on all the small things, you can forget about where you're going because that's a big thing. My big thing was winning grand finals. It might be profit. You don't need to talk about profit every day in your business. But when you work back throughout your business to get profit, you need to, and there's certain things which should become really obvious uh, what you need to do. So your standards, you need to turn up to meetings on time. You need to, if you have an appointment to see a client, you need to be early, not on time. You need to be early and organized. And you need to do your own work on that client and make it the best meeting that client will ever have. All them tiny details, and you just work back from your uh, ultimate goal, yeah. which is whatever it is, and, um, and start working back on it. All them small things, a thing what some people can't see, they're that small, they're not noticeable, but you do them every day, relentlessly. Um, and then you'll end up having that success and the, the, the success what our business needs. Yeah, a lot. I like it. You, you're referring to the top of the pyramid, why we exist, the, the basics, the granular detail, the simple things there. You keep doing that and bringing it every day. And that's what's going to get you to that ultimate top point. So what other lessons in leadership have we got? What are the top lessons that you've got from all of this experience in leading teams and people? So in in uh, 2016, we played a game against Warrington, and we had um, a, an horrendous uh, injury crisis. I think it was 16, 13, whatever it was. We had a shocking injury crisis. So we had 30, 34 players in our squad. There's only really 24 what can play first team. There's only 13 in the team who starts, and I lost 10 of my starting team uh for 10 weeks we only played 30 games so we was losing games uh people were getting injured we had to call training off there was a couple of games where we needed they couldn't play which is unheard of and uh and every day my, my physio was coming in saying we've lost another player and i could see everybody feeling down um and i felt down myself yeah i've never felt as as vulnerable and I don't need an arm around me of anybody. Um, but that time I needed the owner to say, I know what you're going through, I'm with you. And I didn't get that. And so one day I said to uh, my head of performance, my big con, I said, get everybody in the room, all the players, all the staff. And I get everybody in and I said, 
this will not carry on. You know, we will get players back fit. And everybody wants us to lose. The media was screaming for me to be sacked. Wigan found a right not wanting for me to be sacked every day. It was a it was a very toxic place to be. And I said to the staff, we are going to win a grand final. We're going to get to Old Trafford. We're going to win a grand final. And then we're going to just show it up, people, that we've won it and we've proved you all wrong. I didn't believe it at the time because we had, we had no players left. Um, but I just felt like I need to do something what's going to revitalise everybody, change yeah. everybody. And slowly but surely, we got the players back and we got to a grand final. And, and I remember the last few seconds, the countdown of the game, and the, all the fans start counting, you know, five, four, three, two. And I remember thinking back in them seconds, how the hell have we done this? <laughs> My hairs were standing on end there when you were doing the five, four, three, two, one. And uh, and I thought, how the hell have we done this? And my CEO jumped on me back and he, he said something a bit cruder than that about how, how we've done this. And uh, and, I, and I understand it, but you know what that is? That was just belief. That was people believing what I said. But you, and you I didn't really believe it myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because what you said is you didn't really believe it, but you needed to do something to revitalize it. Now, that second bit that you just said is you got everyone else to believe it somehow. How did you do that? Well, I just sold them an honest story. So I made them imagine, and I said to the player, I said to everybody, can you imagine the countdown at Old Trafford, the 70,000 people on, and the, the Wiggy fans are counting down five, four, three, and then I'm running on the field. And I said to the players, I actually said this, and I'm running on the field. I can't run, I've no knees left. But I said, I'm walking on the field very quickly, and I'm, I'm looking at you in the eye, and I'm going to say to you, we've won a grand final, and I'm going to give you the best hug ever. And I said this to the players. And then it happened. So I did walk on the field. Uh, and, I walked the players, and I said that. I mean, it's classic Napoleon Hill. If the mind can't conceive it, it can't believe it. So your mind did conceive it. You put that vision in people's mind. You instilled that belief in people. And, and actually, that five-second countdown, I didn't know that story, actually. It's the first time I heard you say it. Uh, you told them, imagine that what this five second countdown is going to be like at Old Trafford. Oh, and by the way, for all of the Man United fans, Sean is going to Old Trafford tonight, aren't you, Sean? Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm yeah. Up to United and Everton. My, my grandson, Teddy, is a rugby yeah. fan, he's a football fan, he's a wrestler. He's, so he's a big United fan. So we're going there tonight. Looking forward well, to it. Got to acknowledge a couple of people have made some comments here. So what we've got here uh, NASA cleaner. Yeah, I mean, look, 1962, President Kennedy. He's walking through NASA. He's getting a tour of all of the new, play, uh, this, all of the technology that they're proud of. The USA is going, you know, we, we're going to go into space. And, and he bumps into the cleaner on a Friday night. He was getting the tour of all the different departments late on a Friday night. And he said to the cleaner, he said, President Kennedy, sir, what are you doing here at this time on a Friday night? And you know what the cleaner said? He said, I'm helping put a man on the moon, which is exactly your point, wasn't it? What you said, yeah. Sean. So, yeah, really good, uh, really good story there, JW. Thanks for putting that in there. Um, uh, Mike, again, look, Mike's all over this today. Same philosophy, so Alex Ferguson had that he would speak to everyone and make them feel part of the team from the cooks, cleaners, kit man to the players in the board. Paul Box, oh, this is interesting. Every person is equal in a team. The team is everyone who can impact the outcome. What are your thoughts? Absolutely correct. Everybody is exactly the same. The, the, the thing about this, James and, and Paul, is it's making sure that everybody understands that they have a role to play. And they need to understand that role. And that goes back to tell everybody everything all the time. So whether it's the physio, the cleaner, you need to be very clear with everybody what perfect looks like. You need to tell them what you what what perfect looks like. I think it might be more than they've got role to play. It's that what I get from you is that they feel valued as well. It's you've got a role to play, and we value that role. Yeah, so, absolutely. The, the, but in it, fact, 
the front office that we, you know, the accountant, if the players don't get paid on time, you're going to have a lot of unhappy players. So that accountant has to do his job really well. The chef, he feed the team. He has to perform every single day, three times a day. Um, you know, so he, he, everybody uh, has a value to us winning, winning the grand final. And I, I tell you what, I tell you what we did. And this is true, James, and stop me if I've told you. But we will play a grand final at the end of the year on a Saturday, on the Friday night in our hotel, when all the players have gone to bed. Me, the CEO, Chris Olinsky, head of performance, Mark Bitcoin and myself will sit down and I will pose the question to them saying, how do we 100%, 100% guarantee we get back here next year and win? Not get back here, get back here and win. And then we will work through the business. So is the ground staff any good? Have we been able to train on the field? How has our injury been? Every player, uh, do we get value out of every player? So some players who are playing the day after the gun final, we made decisions to, to, to move them on because we knew they weren't going to help us win grand final for years and years and years to come. And that might sound very harsh, but that is professional sport. But what, what, what my point is, the day before the grand final, we were planning for next year. And we would hear about other clubs who we were playing against. And they would celebrate in their hotel, having meals with underpaying bottles of wine, celebrating that they got to a grand final. And we was in our hotel planning for next year and the year after. And then once we knew the goal, start with the end, and that's getting the next year, getting to Old Trafford and winning, and then working back, looking at everybody, the chef, the groundsman, the players, the physios, the everything we did our pre-season, every detail got covered in that meeting. And we get to about three o'clock in the morning. Great bit of work, but it was brutal. And that is professional sport. Yeah, well, I, I think it's professional high achievement in in a, in any walk of life as well. I think you've got to make those decisions. And so th there you go. There's a couple of other things that's coming in here. Let's have a look. We've got Mick Corrigan. He's Burnley, is Mick Corrigan. And again, not that far from you. Identifying why you exist. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Simon Sinek is actually originally from Victor Frankl, that from Man Search for Meaning. So that, uh, that is when you get consistent and sustainable engagement from all internal, external partners. Well said, Mick. A um, couple, couple of other things here. Mike Moss is coming in again. IVVM, which is um, idealize, visualize, verbalize, and materialize, which is the Napoleon Hill philosophy of success. Think it, hear it, see it, achieve it. That's Paul Box coming on of what you've said again. And we've got one more point here. Uh, Dominic. Leadership is having the vision, passion, and direct and direction that others can follow. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. I totally agree with that. And and it's and the only way you can you can get them to follow you is tell them what you're thinking, what your thoughts are. Give them your vision. Let them see your passion and uh, and your, your direction. It becomes obvious. You know what I mean. So that's. That's a, that's a perfect saying, that definitely. I grabbed a quote here from Oprah Winfrey. I didn't know whether I was going to use it or not. Let's just uh, let's just grab it. Forget about the fast lane. If you really want to fly, just harness your power to your passion. Do you believe that? Yeah, I do. I do. It's, how, it's how do you do it then? How do you harness the power to your passion? Because you've got it. You've got the passion. How do you harness the power of it? Yeah, I, I think what one of the main things there about harnessing, harnessing your power to, to your passion is do something you love. Do, do something what you love doing. And um, and there's a lot of people who I see who are not happy in the role, what they do. So the, the first thing is do something when you love what's in your heart. And I've not, I've not worked for decades. And... Um, I feel I feel the same. I, I mean, I can relate to exactly that. I, I feel exactly the same. I don't work. So, so. I've got four jobs, and uh, and I've never worked for decades. So I, I I know I'm a very very lucky man. But once you have a passion for something, um, and I know not everybody can do what they love, but if you can try to do something you love, it, then it's easy then to earn your power to what you love. It's it's just automatic for me. 
Can we move on to achievement here? Top three lessons in achievement now. And got a couple of questions here. Um, let's go with a tough one now because look, I, I'm just very aware of the current sensitivity over this. And this uh, this was a question that was sent to me from a guy called Chris Blackburn, absolute legend. Um, and what was the big? Look, well, we're talking about achievement here, and this is a t uh, you know it's a tough question. What's your biggest lesson? from beating Samoa at the World Cup so comprehensively and then losing against them the same team in the semi-final. And this, by the way, folks, if you're watching, this was November last year, 2022. Yeah, so I'm a very, very, um, I have to win. And I, I, I don't want people on the call to think I'm an arrogant person. I'm not. Um, but I, I love, I'm obsessed with winning, being the best, being different. And uh, I'm very close to my missus. I started to go, I started going to my wife when I was 14. I left home when I was 15. I went living with her when I was 15 and never went back home. And uh, I'm still married, been married a long, long time. I don't know how long I've been married. And uh, we played St. Helens a few years ago when I was coach of Wigan and Ben Flower punched one of the players, got sent off after two minutes. And St. Helens, Wigan and St. Helens, there's a lot of hatred. And when we lost that game, uh, for weeks afterwards, I said to my, I said to Lorraine, my missus, I cannot feel as bad as I feel at this minute for weeks. And I'm not that sort of person. I can get on with things. I, I've had a lot of uh, hassle in my younger days, a lot of trouble in my life. So I do get over things quickly. And I didn't get over that quickly. I said to my missus, I cannot feel as bad as this. Getting beat by Samoa in November in the semi final was far worse. Uh, it was like the only way I can describe it to you is like grieving, and you might think that's a bit dramatic, but I put that much effort into winning that World Cup, that much belief like months and months of sleepless nights, work, obsession with winning that World Cup, and to underperform the way we did in the biggest game was unbelievable. So what happened after the game, uh, we beat them by 60 points in the first game, played them in semi-final, and we got beat in golden point. Um, so straight after the game, I was wounded like I've never been before. And then straight away, I thought, did I pick the right team? Did I pick the right subs on the bench? Did I, did I decide on the correct game plan? What I agree with the players? Uh, of all the footage I showed in that week, what, was it the right footage? Uh, how I verbalised my message to the players, was it right? So everything I looked at is, is what I did. So there was no looking around blaming players, blaming staff. It was, it was everything what I'd done. And I had to analyse that for a few weeks and I've still... That was in in November, and I've still not really come to terms with it. And I've worked a few things out in my mind, and I'm I'm doing a review for the World Cup for the RFL now as we speak. Um, but it was just a, a, a such such an important game, and a few players didn't perform to the standard of what we expected. Uh, the pressure appeared to get to a few players. And um, and that's me analysing everything I've done. So it was a great lesson to me um, about even uh, at my age, I've been caught for decades and decades, still never assuming things. We did things in that game. Uh, some of our players did things in that game, which I thought they weren't capable of. I mean, I mean, technical bits, rubbly technical things, what you might not understand. But to me, there were standouts. And I, and I remember thinking when the game was happening, I didn't think you were capable of that. Right. So to this day, uh, it still got me um, really, really upset. And But it was like, the message is, never think that you're there. Never think that, never assume that everything's sorted because it come back and bite you. No question. All right, well, look, let's get some more lessons here on achievement as well. That's really powerful. Sorry, thanks for you know sharing us into your world there. I mean, you've you've you've, to, you've, you've told us that. I mean, that's 
beautiful vulnerability at its best. What other lessons have you had then in in achieving great things with your teams? What are the top lessons? Um, I, I, I'm always I'm 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 happy happy person, um, but I'll never be satisfied ever. And, and some people on the call might think that's quite sad. I don't think it's sad. I think it's positive. And I've had that said to me in, in at events about not being satisfied. Um, I'm, I'm I'm very much into stoicism, and yeah. uh, I'm, I'm not going to start creeping into stoic lessons. But I'm very much into stoicism, and and that is you're never going to rent pat yourself on the back, and you, you you've done everything, and let's let's relax and enjoy it. Yeah. It's all about what's next. Yeah, and uh, and that is good for any leader on the call is always have the attitude what is next what can i do oh you know another lesson for me is learning every time i talk to you james i learn something you know i've got two of these and one of these so i use them twice as much i know i'm talking a lot on this call but when i um you know that's the the nature of it you're 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 in the hot seat today you're all yeah yeah exactly uh, but I, when I do a keynotes, you know, I ask a lot of questions because I want, when I when I do a keynote, I've I've got a book and I write things in. You know, when I get I learn things on when I'm de- delivering things to people because I know I've got a lot of educated people on the, on the on the call and I learn something every single day. So two of these, one of these, don't use them twice as much. What I've d- done over the years is. Um, work with a lot of coaches, mentored a lot of people. And uh, the one common lesson is people are waiting to stop you speaking because they want to tell you what they think. And that's not a good trait. So ask a lot of questions and do a lot of listening is is, is the key. Be open-minded. Um, when I have assistance with the World Cup with England, or when I have assistance with Wigan, uh, I always had coaches who were better than me at coaching i was very very comfortable with that you know i wanted to be with uh somebody who was challenging me every single day uh, i don't spend time with people who sap sap my energy yeah yeah I, that's why it's very easy talking to you james because you're open-minded you're, you're a positive person you you have a growth mindset and, that, and that's why we get on so well um but if I get talking to a sapper, I won't be talking to you for long. <laughs> you know, what about that security guard? Yeah. He, <laughs> I, I, nearly t- didn't, I nearly didn't walk off from him. <laughs> oh, it's too good. It is too good. Um, the person that asked that question has made a comment, actually. The legend of Chris Blackburn. Love. Uh, what a wonderful, honest answer and analysis. Sean should be so proud of England at the World Cup. And the role it played in promoting the sport. I want to hear here that one. Uh, by the way, you are literally one of the strongest, best, most compassionate leaders that I have ever met, Sean. Seriously, are. And so can I ask a question, there, James? Yeah. We didn't win. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're we're in it to win it, and uh, and 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 it can be dressed up in a positive way, as as much as anybody wants, and. Uh, the fact is, we didn't win. We lost the most in, at the most important time when the pressure was on. So all these people on this call are, are in business in some form. Uh, when it comes to getting that deal over the line, that big sales deal, whatever you've been working on, no mistakes can happen. You have to get that deal over the line and you do it by. Right. Let's, get, let's get right. Let's go there now. Let's go deeper on that point. So what's the top tips, the advice for performing when it matters most, for hitting that top level of performance in the moment when you need to? Re- recognize your simple things you need to do. So for me, it was qu- your skill, quality pass, simple things, but repetition, do it, do it time again. So what is your bread and butter of your business? Recognize what that is, whether it's making calls, whether it's sending a quote, whatever it is just do it really well so if you if you send a quarter by an email everybody sends quotes out by emails 
but you need to make your email stand out. You need to you need to make it look better than everybody else. So and and then repetition. So have that mindset of how can my how can my quotation, how can my study look different, better than anybody else's, and then rep it. Repetition, quality repetition. By the way, is, is the only way forward. And do, do you know what? We our repetition in the World Cup was through the roof. We repped all the simple things really well, and we still didn't get it. So it's just that never-ending. You had a lot. I mean, critical moment pressure situations. You know the psychology that comes into it all. There's 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 a magnitude of things that's going on in the moment there to perform under pressure. So there's there's risk taking. There's there's fighting back. There's the psychology of a team that's coming back at you. You were 2012 up. They're coming back, so they're on the open. There's a bit of a downward, and then there's the, there's that critical moment pressure. How are you going to deal with it, and how are you going to manage your own anxiety and performance and mindset? So lots of things that are coming in there. A so, senior person, James, come to me. A senior person in the game come to me after the game and said that we were moral. You know, we were win, we were winners. And I think to myself, what does that even mean? You know, the fact is, you have to have a sense of reality about it. And the fact is, we didn't perform. Right. Here's the next fact. It might be hard to take for you. Because there's not there's not that many of them situations that come up between World Cups. You know? no. You've got a big gap now. You know, before you can go back and go and do it again. Like in business, you don't get that big contract. Guess what? You can get the next one. You can make the next one happen a lot quicker than you've got to wait for the World Cup. So how are you managing that gap? I know this is a mindset lesson that we're going on to now. Uh, Wolf, you might as well change the topic. How are you managing the gap between that loss that's been hard to take and your next major opportunity? So really, really simple answer this. Uh, and it's something we've already discussed. And it's start with the end. So... The end is, I want to win a World Cup in France in 25. And what do we need to do to win it? So what players do we need to pick in that team in 25? And I'm looking at age age groups and uh, a standard of player. And, and I'm doing a review in February for the, uh, for the, for the board. And, uh, and that review is going to be absolutely brutal. And... Uh, because I've done the same exercise of what we've been talking about today, start with the end. And I've worked back all the things what we need to do, the age group, the quality player, the type of training, the the diet, uh, um, the details of, of the of how they, how they run, how fit they are. Lot, lots and lots. I don't want to bore you with every detail. But um, I've done that process. What, what impact has that doing that process had on your mentality then? I feel a lot clearer. I know where I'm going. Well, before I did that, James, I was very, very foggy in a permanent bad mood. Very, do very... Want, do, you want it, do you want it? I mean, that's quite a hairy question. I mean, do you want it, 2025? Is that yeah. something for you? It was the, This World Cup was the best seven weeks of my life. I've been around. I've done a lot of good things. This was the best seven weeks of my life until the last day. Look, heavy heart. I mean, when I sent you that text after that 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 last match, and I thought, you know, I, I, I was going for you as well. But I like how you've communicated it today, to be honest, Sean. It's like, James, we didn't win. Got to get on with it. How, what's the best way of doing this? You've just communicated something so eloquently to everyone here on the call because that is like so hard for someone to take. You said, begin with the end in mind. We start with the end in mind again, and we work backwards, mm. and we go granular, and they're all going to get it brutal. You're going to give them the review. You're going to give them it brutal, and you're going to go and uh, win that. Well, let's see if you do. Let's see if you do. Yeah, we, we'll be here cheering you on. Thank you. Um, any other any other sort of lessons in that? Because look, you you are the king of mindset as well, not just for yourself, but in instilling that mindset in other people as well. What are the what are the tricks here? How do you do that? Um, I, I mean, to be honest, I've never, I've never set out. I am naturally a very, very 
competitive, very, very positive, very stoic thinking sort of person. So I never, I never set out to be a certain way. But what I have done is um, I've always been myself. I've done things which are very, very comfortable with me. So what I would say to everybody on the call is find your way. Find your way what you're very, very comfortable with delivering or you speak to people in your art and trust it. Um, and I, I, I've, I've mentored a lot of people, lots of people in the financial uh, sector and they listen to a lot of people. They try to be too many people and I've done the same. But as soon as I started being myself and, and doing things what were in my art, I, I got success with it. You know, my first year of egg coaching, um, I, I won a league leaders, which is nothing. Uh, uh, and I, I was trying to beat other people. And I had a bit of him and a bit of him and a little bit of myself. And I was never comfortable. And I had a nice chat with the owner at the end. And uh, and I said, I thought to myself, if I'm going to get sacked doing this job, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get sacked doing it my way. So then I started changing. So... I started hammering the players about you turn up on time, you clean the coach, you make sure you take your players back when we dine, uh, you treat people with respect, you say please and thank you to everybody. When you play, I want you that nasty, aggressive, competitive animal. When you come off, you're that nice person again. So I started instilling to the players exactly what I wanted, what meant something to me in my heart. And we won a double, we won a grand final and challenge cup that for sheer. So be yourself. Find out what your way is. I like that. I studied Chinese coaching philosophy for about for a couple of years. Actually, I went over there for a long period of time. And they, at, a, at a young age, when they're developing elite athletes, um, they, they teach them. That there's a Chinese phrase, but it, it it means find your pace. Yeah. So everybody's got to understand their balance points on how much pressure they perform under. They, they need this amount of pressure how much information, that, that amount of information is going to get the best out of themselves. Yeah. You know, uh, how much energy to have, how much food to eat, well, they, all this kind of thing. They've just got all these different balance points to find their pace. And, you, you know, you're saying find your way there. Jim Rohn also says um, the single biggest determining factor of where you end up is your, is, is your own philosophy. So what you did there is you found your way, you had a philosophy and you helped instill that into other people as well. Uh, we've got we got three minutes left, and I want to get everybody's biggest learning. So I want you to all put those in the in the comment box now, so I can share these with Shane, uh, with, uh, with with Sean. And whilst you're doing that, I'll give you a minute to do that. We're just going to play you a video because I'd love you all to go and watch a documentary about how coaching can help you grow your business, and that is live right now on Amazon Prime. So let's just watch this one minute video. Put your comments in the chat box and then I'll read them out. Wolfie, off you go for the video. We are about to go on a journey with eight aspiring businesses and the entrepreneurs behind them. We have no financial help. Everything you see here is ours. When we started the business, the hope was Maze London becomes synonymous with luxury manufacturing. We want 50 salons and we want 25 million pound turnover. So if you've got a problem, yeah. Out the way. I think I'm the best course in the UK. Is this important? We will follow these companies on a roller coaster of emotions. Sometimes say, oh, poor Luke, what are you saying with Parkinson's? That Just is. like you're giving your best to the business, are you giving the best to yourself? No. Challenges. So why would you join a travel company that hasn't had any revenue for 18 months? I told everyone nobody's going down. All they're thinking about is what's in it for me. This is Business as Unusual. Beautiful. Well, there it is. I mean, that is a hands-on documentary reel with the biggest jet challenge that businesses experienced through the pandemic actually live recorded as people who run the businesses through it. So you can watch that live now on uh, Amazon Prime. So go off and do that and enjoy every episode. Uh, you might you might learn a thing or two along the way as well. Let's have a read a few of these things that are coming in now. You ready this? Don't talk to the sappers, Mr. Burke. Yes. Not being satisfied is such a driver. Learn by your mistakes. Review your processes. Adjust the plan. Go again. The adjusted plan may not work. 
as the opposition will be adjusting their plan too. Well, we'll wait and see on that. You can only fit the plan when you're in control and they have the ball and you can prepare as best you can. But we can't read minds. Uh, that's what makes it a game. And like, what else have we got here? <laughs> can we offer Sean a job at Action Coach? I think so. I think so. We love you. Um, maybe there's something that we can do there. Um, improve all skills and understanding of all potential members currently in focus. I look at this one on the positive number number two in the world. Let's say for one better in 2025. Mr. Pattinson. I heard Sean in another podcast say, anything you can do is everything you do. You said that on the call that we did previously as well. It's the mantra in which Pat, the, the Patterson house has got now. My 11-year-old twins groan each time I say it to them. <laughs> That's, I mean, you, you've said that. You haven't said it today, but now you have because Richard's just quoted it for us. Anything you do is everything you do. Um, uh, Rupert Turton. What I'm finding um, very interesting is that Sean has done a real deep dive into what is wrong, which is a very negative place to take yourself. Oh, um, he's got a second point here. Knowing it is, will I, uh, knowing it is, what will I get him to a positive plan to progress after that? I don't know, Rupert. Maybe you can comment on that afterwards. Manage the gap between loss and opportunity. Something I've had to do but never had the words for. Thanks, Grace. Biggest learning. If I'm going to get sacked, I'll make sure I did it my way. Look at that. That's beautiful. Uh, Tim Brown. Thanks, Sean. Love the story about the time Wigan and the half uh, half the side was out injured. Leadership is showing passionate belief when it's needed most. Yeah, I mean, what you said there was was pretty unbelievable. You know, you, you needed to do something to revitalise, I think you said, the team. So... And you got everyone believing in it, and then it happened. Beast learning. I need to take full responsibility for everything in my life. What can I do better next time? Sean, you've got me pumped. Michael, do the basics. Do what you feel is the right thing. Mr. Blackburn, the honesty in saying it's all about winning. You, you hit me with that. You slapped me around the face. Did James not? We didn't win. Let's swallow the bit of pill. Let's get on with it. It's a big learning that. Very yeah. powerful dramatic the way he said it the focus on what happened in the world cup and his commitment to winning france in 2025 um uh, mick corrigan last point always keep the end in mind that's what you said i mean that's how he got over it yeah that's yeah. That the starting point oh we, we've got another one coming in rachel was the great rachel Woods. i love find your way yes find your way uh sean is there anything that you want to leave us with um yeah there is um, if you if you can develop in your organisation, it's something what I said earlier, that honesty, that uh, people working together, how can I make your job easier, how can you make my job easier, without getting praise of senior people and everybody wants to walk to that why, you know, what we're about, uh, that being honest with each other, telling with everything all the time, have that sort of ethos about your business where nobody's offended we all want the same thing then you'll have success whether that's profit whether it's whatever it is what success is for you you will get it if you have that ethos within all the employees well uh, just on behalf of everybody else here uh sean it's been a pleasure it's been a privilege we love what you do we love what you've shared today we're gonna we're gonna take them learnings we're gonna put it into business next week and we're all getting behind you for 2025 we are getting behind you big time thank you very much thank you and, very much. Uh, uh, mike greenwood who's got the last say uh, here enjoy the game sean come on united, come on, That's united. Uh, Mr. Greenwood. there you go absolutely enjoy that uh absolute legend see you next week folks 4 p.m big friday finish right here bye for now